Hello, and welcome back. As I mentioned last week, this is going to be a week of tidying up all the little jobs, and hopefully putting a few more cottages in here, securing this top perimeter, and making it spawn-proof so that I can actually release the villagers. Obviously the ones in the trading hall will stay in the trading hall, but it would be nice to have some free-roaming ones that are in the fields and are able to walk around the paths. It will mean I'll probably have to get rid of the berry bushes, which is a shame because I do like those, but uh, we cannot trust villagers to not impale themselves. I have also converted two leather workers. For some reason they're not resetting their trades though. These are the, the cauldrons that they were assigned to, so I don't know why they're not resetting. Also they have different... he's got like a a beige bit on his and he's got like a gold bit. I wonder why. Is it your level? Yeah, you're the higher level one. Huh, never noticed that before. And I have one more farmer. This guy should be the carrot guy. Yep. They're also not resetting their trade, so maybe I've just overworked them. But because of my trading, I am over halfway towards getting my emeralds for the um for the beacon. Another couple of rounds, another couple of days in game should uh, should more or less see it done. I'm out of melons and I am quickly running out of things like potatoes so I need to go tend to my farms a bit and that's going to be the first job for today. Now do the potatoes and the carrots first so they can grow. And I didn't bring chulka boxes, of course I didn't. Oh well. Okay, I'm going to leave the wheat fields for now. I've got the potatoes and the carrots. I've already got so much wheat, I think I've got maybe 20 full stacks of hay bales, so I'm fine for now. So I think for now I'm going to leave it. Some of this is going to get turned back into grassland anyway for when I put the cottages on it. So I'll end up harvesting some then, but it takes so long to replant. It genuinely takes three in-game days to do these fields. It's ridiculous. So instead I'm going to work on some of the long overdue chores, and I think first of all I'm going to decorate the room with the sheep farm in it. The wool farm, I should say. Just my usual, just kind of ruffle it up, add some texture. While I remember, I'm just going to go get my nether wart, because you need fortune. It really makes a difference on this stuff. Bleh. That's coming along nicely. I'll be able to change this over soon. Another couple of weeks, I should think. Oh, let's get that bamboo. Hi, guys. Still doing good? All of these double chests, except these three, are now full. This one's very nearly full. One or two more harvests will do that. So I'm going to have a lot of bamboo when this uh, next update comes out. For this room, I'm just going to make it a little bit rough. I'm going to kind of put some dents in and make it a little bit uneven. That's quite a straight line of those, so I'll probably just rearrange the copper to make it look a little more natural. Put some texture in the walls. I'm not going to expand it any more than it is, other than maybe dipping it in a couple of blocks here and there to make some dents. But uh, it's, it's, it'll just do this for now. I don't need this to span out into any other rooms, which is what I thought originally it would do. And then I stuck this massive corridor in there, so we don't need to. We can expand off the corridor. But first job, decoration. This has been decorated exactly as the rest of the cave area has been. It's just piggly piggly. This back wall's a bit straight, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. You don't see them anywhere. This one's got a bit of dripstone hidden away back here. And it's got one crater bit here. When I was digging this wall out, I realised this is like my old room. This is where my bed used to be. This is my old base. Way back in episode one. Yeah, I've just spruced this up a little bit. It'll become a storage room or something. I may as well leave it here. No need to cover it back up again. If the space is already there, I may as well use it and just shove more boxes and stuff in there. You know how I like my heaps of boxes. Anyway, that's a job done. I want to check the villagers again. How are we doing? You've still not reset. What's going on? Why are they suddenly not resetting? It must have been a couple of days in game. I don't understand villagers. What about you? No, you haven't either. Okay, so quickly looking it up. It might be that I put them on the wall. Yes, is that it? Oh, you fussy people. So when I was putting these down, instead... Okay, you know what, I'm just going to step out of here. No, you stay. They wouldn't let me out. Okay. So when I put the workstations down, instead of clicking on the floor tile to place it, I must have accidentally clicked on essentially a block side. So it's attached the block the workstation to here rather than to the floor so it means the villager can't interact with it. Ridiculous. It would also explain why the new guy isn't working because I would have put him down incorrectly. You, you need to step back please. 
No, no, get, oh, they'll come back in. On the floor. There we are. Go on, in you go. Thanks. Now you've restocked. Thank you very much. Let's do some trading. That is a hideous colour. Yeah, don't show me it. Black one's fine, thank you. Two treads on each, and that's given me another full stack of emeralds. Very nice. Okay, so that was a faff. Anyway, next job. I'm actually going to start on that path. The path that connects from the main path here, with all the mud and granite. I'm going to run it down to the next trading hall. Thankfully, I should have more than enough mud. Where's my granite? Here's my granite. Diggy diggy. Path continued. Doesn't really need to be much more than this. I'll add a little bit more texture, maybe some moss and maybe some more of the, uh, the dirt path around here when I clear this out, because this is going to get tidied up later when I put more villager buildings in. Ooh, speaking of which, I need to go bake some bricks. Yeah, I'll just do that now while I remember. Okay, scratch that. I don't need to do that. I have plenty of bricks. Cool. So the next little job I want to do is this. I want to get rid of this composter. I still want a composter because it's nice to just chuck all my seeds in when I uh, have finished gathering. But I want it to be more hidden. I don't want it to just be a little tower of chests and hoppers. What am I doing? I'm making these into blocks, aren't I? How soon? I forget. I think I'll keep it here, though. I'll just uh, make it look again more intentional and not just like a heap of things have been dumped there, which they were. Set it back a little bit. Okay. Okay, I want the coarse dirt. Where's that gone? Come here. Do a couple of higher ones. One there, one there. So what I want is a chest to be hidden about there-ish. Okay. Yeah, strip it. Trap door on the top. Need to get some ladders. Ah, uh, get out the bushes. I had the audacity to say that the villagers might run into the bushes, and all I have done is run into the bushes. Okay, so I think this was kind of what I was after. I wanted it to be a great big heap of, like, material. It's like mulch and dirt and a bit of moss. There's some steam coming out of it because compost heaps get very steamy. And then it's just blocked in. And the final touch. There you are. A little wheelbarrow. It's quite cute. Certainly makes more sense than uh, just having a tower of stuff stand in there. Ow, I'm in the bushes again. But if you come down here, this is where you access the chests. Which I've made into a bigger chest. So there we are. That's that little job done. That can sit like that for now. Maybe just need to put some of these flowers back. You can go there. Yeah, okay, that'll that'll do for now. I need to get more potatoes soon. I do have more in my uh, main room. It's amazing how quickly you go through them. Oh yeah, you've now gone up to gold and you've gone up to green. Cool, got a few more pumpkins in with another villager. And we're getting there, little by little. So I've just added a few more touches to this compost heap, which is mostly carpets and some ferns, and I realised something that I had in my mind is actually that I wanted some sticks. Uh, you know, the little dead bush things that you get in deserts? And I don't actually have any of those, so I'm going to go see if I can find some. I think you get them occasionally in spruce biomes, don't you? So I'll go have... Actually, there used to be some around here. Aha! Okay, so this was a far less exciting journey than I thought it was going to be. Mushroom. 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 Stick. Stick. You know what? Take out the button. That's just added a little more texture and just made it look like a heap. An intentional heap. Yeah, that's just a load of stuff thrown on there now, isn't it? Ooh, roots. That's what I need. Yes, roots. Who would have thought a compost heap would need so much care to get it to look right? Okay, yeah, okay, leave it be. Leave it be, step away. I had no idea that leather workers gave you saddles after a while. I've never gotten one high enough leveled. It makes sense, I suppose. I am absolutely going to take some saddles, thank you very much. But you, have you got saddles as well? You have, cool. I think that might perfectly be what you need. Yeah, no it is. That's that's perfectly what I need for a beacon. That has just beautifully landed where it needs to. I was just about to convert some stone masons as well, which I think I'll still do, since it is all just down here, and it's not difficult to do. I'm actually realising, particularly because I'm going to be doing the harbour soon, probably next episode, I want another beacon at the front as well. 
I thought a beacon just in the mines would do for now, but I've already got all the skulls. I can go trap the wither in the bedrock in the end, or I can actually just fight one again. It really didn't take much, apparently. Unless I was just very lucky last episode. I'd definitely like to try and get um, another beacon. I think for continuity, what I'd actually like the most is to have three completely perfectly in a row. So to line it up with probably the centre of the gatehouse. I don't know where that would line up in the mines. Honestly, I might just go with it and then have maybe one that's kind of around the gatehouse and then another one that's in the town. So you've got three perfectly in alignment. Not today though, obviously. I mean, if I've got this one beacon done, I'll use it. I'll probably keep it out the front for now to do the um, to do the harbour. But uh, yeah, definitely need to get some more because that really has not taken long at all to get all those emeralds. And that's just, it's essentially been off pumpkins. It's been like three villages consistently trading pumpkins for like two hours. Really not that big a deal. Do as I've done before. Set those out and the stonemasons can convert themselves. I'm going to see if I can do four with one potion. Don't see why I can't sneak a fourth in if I haven't crammed close enough together. I actually do get another rail cart. Bread for the children. I think I'll let them get their numbers up before... Oh, okay, you can come. I say I'll let... Oops. I'll let them get their numbers up before I uh, start taking some. I can be a bit more frivolous with this since um, I'm done with my first beacon. Can you or is there a problem? Oh! <gasps> Okay, so they can they can at least have babies. Hello. Right, we'll leave them to it for a bit then. Something else I'd quite like to do is I'd like to put another wolfie, so one of these, on here, but looking that way. I think that would be a nice way to mirror that, but not have it be completely symmetrical. There? Or there, maybe. But that would need a bit of work around there, and I might want to put a building there. Do I want to put it here? That does kind of line up better with that one, but does that also make it look... Like it was trying to line up, whereas if it's down here, it's quite clearly not meant to line up. Can't even see it down here. Yeah, okay, I might put it up there then. A wolf might be quite nice here, because this was, and still is at some point, I might even do this today, going to be the pond with the axolotls in it. Having a wolf here to sort of fill in this area might be quite nice. This little wolfie is all done. I like the fact that they're kind of in a line, but they're not completely perfectly symmetrical. Yeah, that's nice. Big wolfie looking out over where that dragon is still thankfully sleeping. For now. I think we're on borrowed time at the moment. Next job, I think I'm going to start clearing these fields. This little bit, this big bit, and this bit. I think I'm going to aim to leave this patch of wheat for now. But this I'm going to clear, and I'm going to put some more of the village buildings on here. This is kind of going to be the main job for today. I think I'd like to put at least three cottages. I might try and make like a little a little collection of smaller cottages that all have like a communal garden rather than everything having their own individual gardens like these ones do. So maybe a couple of cottages, some communal cottages, and then something else that I've had in mind for a while and for, I was thinking of putting it up at the um up at the mine area. But there's kind of already something there that's quite similar, so it would be nice to put one down here, and that is a bathhouse. I'm going to make them a cosy little bathhouse. So yes, clear all this out, convert it back to um, convert it back to grass, and then I think I'll try and leave it on different levels. That might be quite nice. Just tidy it up a smidge. And then, once I'm all done with this, I should be able to go in, properly kind of put a boundary on it as much as I can. Some of it will have to be improvised for now, but put a little bit of a boundary on it, find some way of spawn proofing it. Probably just going to be torches under carpets for now. And... Uh, yeah, try and set some, try and set some villagers free into this farm and village area. I need to test it. I need to test how far they roam and how accurately they stay in an area. Because some areas, I would like villagers out and about all the time, but it just might be that they don't do that. It might be that they're just too, um, too set to hang around beds or hang around workstations. I mean, obviously, I've got so many barrels here. It's just going to become fishermen. There's just fishermen everywhere. Maybe a few farmers if I put composters around, but they're uh, they're just going to keep turning into fishermen, I imagine. Anyway, clear for wheat. So I'll wait for the last of these uh, fields to turn back into dirt, which I'm hoping they will. They don't seem to want to dry out yet, which is a little annoying. I will go and see if those villagers are ready to be stonemasons yet. Whoa! What's going on in here? Have we got enough people? 
that feels like a better crowd. Here's the last guy. It'd be cool if I could get a four with one potion. Cool, I got all four. Now I just need to stand here so they lock onto me. That's one, and thankfully the others aren't attacking him. Number two. Number three. Oh, all of them together. Workstations on the floor tiles. I'll go get some more clay and they can sort themselves out. They've all leveled up and they're all on stone, which is good because I've got lots of stone. Now are they going to find their workstations? Because they keep separating into two groups like this, but then they never use the workstation. So I can't tell who's, who's who. Hi. Hi. You've refreshed at some point. So we'll leave them for now, let them sort themselves out. I'm going to lay out some very rough foundations for where the buildings are going to go. And then we'll start building something. That can be a slightly bigger one. That can be a dinky little one. Another dinky one. I'm going to try a diagonal house. Don't think I'll try a diagonal door just yet. I think I'll pop it on the end. But I'll try a diagonal house. I'm actually going to get quite a lot of houses on here, aren't I? So this actually fits way more than I thought it was going to. There's a patch here that I've left bare because I've got an idea of what I'm going to put there. It's part of the bathhouse. You'll see when it's done. And uh, yeah, the rest is just cottages. Some of them are itsy bitsy teeny weeny and some of them are a bit bigger. Kind of like the idea that that's quite a big one. Maybe that's um, some kind of public property again. It's maybe some kind of communal area, maybe a cooking house. And because there's going to be some degree of the harbour wall behind here, I'm not taking them too far back towards the river. I'm going to leave that gap. And just follow these natural curves. This might get tidied up a little bit, but for now, I'm going to go with this. It's actually going to be quite a big job, really, but it's in little bits, so it seems quite manageable. I'll get on with this then. These guys still aren't resetting, and I don't know why. They can access anything, any workstation, and they've got free roam behind the grass wall. The, uh, the workstation is accessible. I have tried turning it on the off chance they need it to be the blade facing this way rather than that way and it hasn't made any difference. I'll try that again for an extended period, see if that helps. Yeah, I've tried it like that. That didn't seem to make any difference. Like, he's gone to that one, but he's still not resetting. So, don't know what's up with you. You're very confusing. See, these guys have reset. I've traded with these guys multiple times today. Where's my Wheaty Boy? There he is. This is adding up towards the second beacon already. Unrelated to anything, I had to go and get some milk because I got bad omen and there is a cow stuck in the wall. She seems alright about it. It's actually been there for so long. I'm not even sure how she got there. done. Well, this bit of the village, no doubt there's going to be more. Yeah, it's done. Got some bees, because of course we have. Windy little streets. 
Each house is loosely decorated. There's some beds and there's just some bits of furniture in there and some lighting. That's about it. They're all roughly the same. There's no uh, no set pattern because they're all different shapes and sizes, but they're, they're roughly the same. As you can see, I haven't spawn proofed yet. We shall come to that. I quite like how the diagonal house turned out. It's a bit higgledy-piggledy and weird, but I quite like it. it. Certainly works better than I thought it was going to. It's only a little, but it's nice to start with something a bit different, because I've never done a diagonal building before. So start with something small that you can manage, and one day maybe I'll do something a little more impressive than a 3x5 kind of hut. And this is the little wee bathhouse. So it's got doors. In my original design I did have the curtains all the way across, but of course the villagers can't get under a trapdoor like that, can they? So I had to uh, scrap that middle one. And it's just a thing in the middle with some warm water, there's some bars of soap, there's some little herbs if they wish to add something to the water, and there's some towels. That one's a bit wet, I suppose. And here's like a little clothes washing area. There's some cauldrons to wash your clothes in, and then there's all these drying lines. So these are all people's sheets hanging out to dry. More little houses. And this is like a... I don't know what the term would be for it, but it's like a kind of public kitchen. There's all meat out on these racks, and there's potatoes on these, and then there's some just some ovens down here. The backs of the gardens are quite tatty and overgrown, but some of the fronts they've got uh, little wee vegetable beds and stuff. Just a couple of them. Presumably the farmers are around here, so they don't want to be bringing their work home with them. They don't want huge great big gardens to tend to, but it's nice to have a little bit of uh, growth here and there. No, I really like how it's come out, it's really sweet. And if we see it from the sky, I was a bit concerned that it would like block the view of this, but it actually works really well because it's slightly lower, so it sits really nicely in the landscape. If you look at it from over here, from the main entrance, all you really see is the rooftops. Which I really like. I didn't want them to be these great big houses like up to here on the on the horizon. I wanted them quite low. You can still see things like the watchtower. <laughs> all the all the smoke from the dragon in the background. That's the only thing that's rendering in. There's a couple of extra things I'd like to do. I'd like to um, add some more animals, some cats and some dogs around the place, maybe a donkey. Um, there is this patch back here, which I might make um, a little yard with a pig in it or something. Some chickens, I suppose, would be quite nice and quite fitting. I was planning on completely encasing this today, using, you know, just little cobblestone walls and stuff to kind of fill in these edges and make it so that maybe up to this mud path that goes up to the main gateway, so this little scoop, to be entirely encased around the wall, I'm actually not going to do that today because so much of this is going to get changed when I build the harbour. So I don't know where the harbour wall is going. So when I do the harbour next week, I will obviously decide where the wall is going and I'll fill it in. I'll empty out a bit of this river so that it makes more sense. I'll probably do some of the river clearing over here as well. And then when I build the harbour wall back up, I will put the wall on top for containment all the way along this stretch. And then it's literally going to be a 20 minute job to match it up with the paths over here. So rather than doing a load of work this week that I then change next week, I'm just going to move it on to next week. And then hopefully we can release some villagers. But yes, it's um, it's still not spawn proofed and it's not encased. So we shan't be releasing any villagers just yet. Going to have to carry that over. There is a lonely cat all the way out here in the potatoes, so we'll take him up. He can come live in the village. Alright, you can stay there. You can live in that house. We'll get some dogs too. One around here might be quite nice. Okay, that's one of you. Yeah, I think one's definitely got to be sitting outside the food house, hasn't it? There we are, a lovely doggy. There we are, I now have two two beacons worth and some spares. So that's one for the mines and one for out the front here. And I'd still like to get some more, but there's no rush for those. I can just trade them as and when. I get one for one with um, leather, so I've got all of this in emerald stacked up, potentially. Just gotta work my way through them slowly. This place is looking nice now that it's all growing in. Yeah, it looks nice. It's a shame I can't keep it as gloomy as the rest of the base, but uh, the grass needs it, unfortunately. Oh, now I just have my shulkers to organise. I heard the dogs growl, and I'm so lucky because a cat is here, so this creeper won't come any closer. Why are there two creepers in here? Why all of a sudden have I started having creepers coming into the room? I haven't changed anything. No, stay away, I have a cat. I mean, unless I've knocked a torch, I'm pretty sure my light levels are sufficient. Like, even in the places where it looks quite dark, it's actually still like four or five. Yeah, there's nothing here. There's nowhere. Where are they coming from? 
but I think I shall call it here for this episode. Next week, definitely going to do at least this harbour wall, get the walls in around the village, get the villagers in. That is a definite for next week. Would like to also build, I don't know, just a bit more of the harbour so there's something to build on the episode after. I have also finally got um, the appropriate Nautilus shells to be able to make the... The underwater breezy thing, what's that called? No, really, what's that called? What is it called? Conduit, that's the one. I have finally got enough Nautilus shells from the trader to be able to get a conduit. So that might help for clearing out the river, but that will all be next time. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you again next week. Bye for now.